your host Rob. This video we're going to delve back into the conspiracy theories and we're going to discuss a robot apocalypse. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, robot apocalypse. Now, this is an interesting topic because this is something that I feel personally that is probably fairly likely to happen when you consider it versus other apocalypses that people seem to go nuts over for whatever reason. But this one definitely has a lot more water to hold in its cup. And the interesting thing is, is that I think the reason we don't consider this to be something serious is because it involves the very things we rely on in life. Computers, technology, uh, robots, it's, it's all, it all falls under the same roof. You know, when, when you pick up your iPhone and you ask Siri to tell you the weather, or when you ask Siri, you know, whatever question you may ask her, and she gives you a fairly intelligent answer, that right there is a nice indication of early stages of artificial intelligence. And this is really where this apocalyptic conspiracy takes place, which is AI. Now, the reason, again, that people do not really think of this as a conspiracy theory or potentially an apocalyptic event is because we're not we're not ready we're not ready to give up the things we rely on and we rely so heavily on technology the idea of not even having a phone drives people nuts i mean i can't tell you how many times i'm at work all right and somebody will bring in their phone to exchange or bring in their phone to get fixed or replace the, the screen on their iphone and the first thing they ask is how long is this going to take and God forbid you tell them more than a day. I can't, I can't be without my phone. I can't live without my phone. I need my phone. You don't understand. I have everything I have is in that. And it's like, really? I mean, I, you know, I have my phone. Look, I have Galaxy. You know what I mean? Like, I still don't use it as a freaking phone. Really, that's, that's really it. Like, if my Galaxy phone cracked or if I lost it or whatever, it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. You know what I mean? It just wouldn't. I don't, I can't put that much into a phone. You know, even my computer, like, I have a lot of stuff in my computer, but I back everything up. You know, I have CDs, and then I back that up, and I have external hard drives, flashcards, whatever. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this is something that actually scientists are talking about now, and it's like nobody's listening. And I'm not really talking about us per se, but other scientists in the world. It's a big, big debate that we're not really paying attention to now as, as a global community. And this debate's been going on since 2001. Uh, it involves Stephen Hawking. He's he's made his comments. Uh, he believes that intelligence, artificial intelligence, will eventually supersede human intelligence at a rate of two times the speed of how a human will learn. He thinks that he believes every 18 months, a computer or or a microchip or a robot, whatever the case may be, whatever they put or whatever they put artificial intelligence into, continues to learn at a rate of 18 over a span of 18 months two times faster than a human now you know th now for another thing i want to mention this is going to be a multi-part discussion because i'm going to go over some facts i'm going to go over some articles and things of that nature as we progress through this uh, mini series within the conspiracy theory series and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this every other week and one week will be the robot apocalypse discussion and some things that i think you guys would find interesting you guys might want to consider uh reading about and then we'll also talk about uh, continue the uh, Bilderberg miniseries, but so that's Stephen Hawking. Another person I want to bring up. This gentleman's an author, and I'm gonna pull. I have it up right here. Also, there there is. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Steven Spielberg is also releasing a movie this year called Robopocalypse, which is the Robot Apocalypse, which I think will be very interesting. Knowing Steven Spielberg, I'm sure I'm more than sure he is going to leverage some of the facts that I might even be sharing with you as we go through this miniseries here on the channel. Now, so I, I mentioned Stephen Hawking's, and that, that quote that I spoke about with him, that happened back in 2001. Now, in 2013, a um, gentleman named James Barrett, who's the author of a book called Our Final Invention, uh, he has a book that really goes into some detail as to how, not how these events would play out, but why scientists and technology is moving a little bit too fast for our own good. And um, some of the excerpts are, are in this article here. All right, I'm going to mention one thing. 
uh, that I think is pretty compelling. And then what I'll do is I'll put the link in the description. I'll let you guys check it out, and then we'll go from there. So this is what he has to say. Now he he believes in something called ASI, artificial superintelligence. And here's here's a little uh, ex, a little thing that he mentions in the interview uh, for his book. Like I said, this took place in 2013, and I'll put the link in the description. You guys should check it out. It's a really good read. Um, Superintelligence in no way implies benevolence. Your laptop doesn't like you or dislike you any more than the toast your toaster does. Why do we believe an intelligent machine will be different? We humans have a bad habit of imputing motive objects and phenomena. If it's thundering outside, the gods must be angry. We see friendly faces in the clouds. We anticipate that because we create an artificial, like an intelligence machine, it will be grateful for its existence and want to serve and protect us. I, that statement right there to me is is really powerful because he's right. He's right. If if artificial intelligence got to the point where it could outthink us, outwit us, and basically outperform us in every mental in every mental facet, why would it need us? Why would they need us? They wouldn't. <laughs> and when you consider the rate at which a computer learns, like like Stephen Hawking was talking about, and I'll also put that article in the description. Um, and when you consider that any any machine, even now, the most simplest primitive machine can computate mathematical equations faster than we could ever. We would need a we. In fact, we rely on machines to do mathematical equations for us. When you bring a calculator to, to school, but without the calculator, what what have we got? We've got a pencil and a paper. And sure, we can get the answer. We can jot it down and, and, and really get into the meat and potatoes of the equation and come out with the answer. By the time we're done, they'd be working on the fourth or fifth question, the computer would be. So, you know, you guys know, you guys for the most part know me. I, I'm, I'm always six to one, half a dozen to the other. I'll start in the middle, and then I'll meet my way in one direction or the other based on evidence, based on the research and the sources. This is something that I think is worth kind of, I don't want to say worry right now because we're not there yet. But it's it's close enough, and then mentions it in this article. This gentleman um, talks about, or, or refers rather, he he refers to a scientist who believes that by the year 2032, I believe it was, by the year 2032, we would see machines that would far outperform by 20 times what we experience today, and they would be very intelligent. And he believes that. You know that is that that's around the time you can start seeing it begin. So very very interesting stuff. And again, I, like I tell you guys, and I, you know I like I like to keep these videos short. This is going on nine minutes already. This is why I said this is going to be multiple parts. When you consider, okay, when you consider the speed and the way machines perform, when you take into consideration how many machines have taken over the jobs of regular human, okay, it, it's right in front of us. The problem is, is that we're so reliant on the technology. Many of us are doing this. We're doing this. You know, we're talking and texting. We're not. We, we embrace the technology, which is not a bad. I'm not against technology. You guys know that. I mean, you guys, some of you, have seen my computer computer building videos, and I love computers and I love gadgets. I think my point here is my concern is that because we are a very arrogant race, and we are. Let's face it. That's just the truth. We're not going to know when to stop. We're not going to know when to tell ourselves, all right, you know what? We've got great stuff. There's no need to go there yet. And if this kind of stuff is concerning some pretty notable people in the world of science and technology, I think it's something that we probably need to consider. But uh, anyway, guys, that is it for this video. We're definitely going to talk more about this. This is not over for this series. Mini series Robopocalypse will be alternating weeks with the... Bilderberg series that I've been working on we're going to get back into that next week and then every subsequent week we'll do one and one until we get until we're finished but for now I'm going to leave you with these two articles for you guys to check out I also want to hear you guys thoughts on the potential of a robopocalypse uh, in a scenario where inte artificial intelligence grows to such an extent that it outthinks us and starts to take over uh, it's something that we used to think about that was only in science fiction and now it's, it looks like it could potentially become science fact. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Uh, definitely read the articles uh, to get a little bit more backstory on it. And like I said, as we go forward, we'll be discussing this some more. I'll be providing you guys more information. And I really think it'll be a nice topic to discuss. I really think a lot of you guys will kind of check this out and be like, oh, wow, you know. Um, it's good stuff. It's definitely good stuff. It's definitely something that's going to make you think. Anyway, guys, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do the news. We just talk entertainment. Take it easy. 
Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. I'm your host, Rob. This video, we're going to delve back into the conspiracy theories and we're going to discuss a robot apocalypse. Okay guys, welcome back. So, Robot Apocalypse. Now this is an interesting topic because this is something that I feel personally that is probably fairly likely to happen when you consider it versus other apocalypses that people seem to go nuts over for whatever reason. But this one definitely has a lot more water to hold in its cup. And the interesting thing is, is that I think the reason we don't consider this to be something serious is because it involves the very things we rely on in life. Computers, technology, uh, robots, it's, it's all, it all falls under the same roof. You know, when, when you pick up your iPhone and you ask Siri to tell you the weather, or when you ask Siri, you know, whatever question you may ask her, and she gives you a fairly intelligent answer, that right there is a nice indicator.